I have a lot of cat hair on my shirt. So I'm I'm sorry in advance. All right, what's up guys? So in this video, I have this PC right here. This is a broken gaming PC from a viewer of mine, friend. And we're gonna try to diagnose it and see what's up with it. Um, I have basically disassembled everything and gone through a few tests and procedures of my own and decided that instead of just letting a video go to waste, I'm going to film it and we'll figure out what exactly is wrong. And uh, yeah, let's do that right now. All right. So I feel like I should start with what exactly this computer is and kind of go over the problem and uh, yeah, explain why all of it's taken apart. So for starters, this is the Z370 platform with a 9600K F, so there's no integrated graphics. This is a 5700 XT, which is kind of funny. I have been seeing this model card quite a lot lately. I don't know why it's just popping up real cheap, which by the way, the 5700 XT is a stupidly good deal right now. Um, we have a deep cool cooler over here that was the one that was on it, but I think I might try to mount this other older deep cool captain to it. So 16 gigs of RAM, and we have this Gam Diaz, however you say it, case with a kind of questionable power supply. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this card out just because if there was something wrong with the board, I just don't want the card to potentially get wrecked just in case, you know. Uh, let's use a cheaper card like that 7970 right there. So this is the Gam Diaz case and everything in here seems to be fine. I did check to see if uh, maybe something was shorting it or there was an issue with these front panel connectors. Um, the PC doesn't post. Sometimes one of the problems could be like, for an example, if you put a standoff in the wrong spot, like right there and it's touching the back, it won't post. But um, everything seems to be okay with the case. I am checking this power supply. It's not my favorite brand. I told him probably not to go with this one, but he did anyways. It's in a Pivia. So we're good on this. Move this chunky cat out of the way. You're gonna go right here, buddy. He's gonna stay there. And then we're gonna grab this video card. Sorry about the uh, whole entire dizzy twirl that I just did. And uh, here you go, bud. You want that? We're gonna remove this card just in case there's something actually wrong with the board. You don't want it to get destroyed. Um, we're gonna pull the CMOS battery, so that. And we're gonna take the RAM out. We're just gonna give the board a quick rundown and wipe off some of the dust. So before I go into all the troubleshooting methods I've already done, I'm just curious if you guys wanna see more content like this. Please uh, write down in the comments if you're interested. I do get a ton of requests for broken PCs, but a lot of times I don't take them because they're not my PCs that I have built. So it's kind of like a weird thing. I don't really want to troubleshoot other people's problems. But then again, I might take just a few. What's up, kitty? If uh, I can make some content or it's something you guys like to watch. I have two cats in here. At the same time, I'm, I'm not like a cat channel, I swear to God. Okay, so first we'll check the bottom of the CPU, just to make sure it's not burnt up. Looks pretty good. There is some dust or something in that right bottom corner, so we'll clean that up. All right, so it looks like I might have found the problem. There is a bent pin in here. It might be very hard to see on camera. Right there, you can kind of see it. Um, it might just be a little bit bent and not touching. So what I'm gonna do is get some tweezers and try to pull the pin up just a little bit, just in case it's not making contact with the bottom of the CPU. Because if it's not touching or it's crossing into another part of the CPU uh, where the gold contact points are, it will not post. So one of the things I wanna say before anyone goes and does this, um, can see the pin right here it literally just has to be moved up a little bit but one of the things I want to mention is that this is kind of like a last resort I've already tried to get this to post multiple ways um, it does not so maybe this will do it maybe it won't I've had some success and some failure the board itself actually could be just dead but um, if you bring this back to a 
company, say you bought this from Micro Center, there's a good chance that they could deny it if you start playing around with the socket. Places like Micro Center have like a two, two or three pin bend policy, where if you bend the socket, you can't return it. <laughs> so, so one of the best ways to tell if this actually worked is to kind of run a light over it. You can actually still see it there. There's a slight crooked bend or a slight crooked pin somewhere in that area. I'll uh, try to zoom in, but it's very subtle. Um, unlike this motherboard, <laughs> this is actually a board from a customer and this kind of stuff happens and I absolutely don't know how somebody could do this. But um, this is kind of the reason why sometimes I don't accept broken computers because some people are just not meant to build computers. Still some paste left on this. I'm not even going to mount a fan or anything. Uh, this is an ASRock board, so it's not gonna show up with a CPU fan error, unlike the ASUS boards, but just that, and put a little bit of weight on top. And we're gonna put that 7970 in and use that power supply first to see if it'll post. So we're not gonna put it back in the case yet, but we're just gonna carefully pop the CPU in. And in this case, I'm gonna be a little extra careful just because if that pin gets moved too much, it might not work. Don't forget the CMOS battery. You will need that to post. Man, this one doesn't wanna go in. There we go. You don't really need a mouse, but it is good to have a keyboard because the only way to get into the BIOS is by hitting F1 or delete. Nice. Looks like we got it to post. That's sick. Hopefully it will actually continue. Let's see. So I thought it was in the clear, but there's actually a boot light on right now. And what's going on is it's frozen and will not continue to the BIOS. So we need to check and see what else on here could be causing an issue. I did put the NVMe back in, so maybe there is an issue with that. All right, let's take this crucial drive out. Maybe this is causing a problem. Not sponsored by iFixit. Okay, so let's, uh, we're just gonna screw this down a little bit more. This doesn't seem like the right screw for this, whoever put this in, it's a little too big or something. Okay, if it doesn't properly post into the BIOS this time, then the motherboard might be a lost cause, but let's do it. All right, I'm starting to wonder, it might be something wrong with that drive. All right, so I don't know if it's the socket or this, but this does not work in this at all. It won't post, it freezes. So I tried a different NVMe, and as you can see, it shows up in the BIOS and it's working. So I feel like maybe during the, I don't know, the bent pin part or so something caused this to go bad. I don't really know, but all I know is it does work now. I tried both the bottom and top slot on the GPU. I have both memory sticks in at the moment, and I did put a fan on here just to make sure it wasn't overheating but we're good, so let's put this back together. Now, this is the proper, uh, it's not Deep Cool, it is the other brand, I can't think of it right now, I'll put it on the screen. But this goes with that, but I almost wanna see if this will fit on there. It's older, but it still functions fine, I just need to clean some of the dust off of it, and uh, let's see if it'll fit. So I took this stuff and I wrapped this tube so it looks a lot nicer. And I just need to do the other one and it should look pretty nice. Oh, it looks like it does not touch, but I came up with a solution for that. And if you can see the taller one, I actually sanded down these a little bit. So I just gotta do that one and I'm gonna try it again.
All right, I think it looks pretty good. Normally I would put things like cable extensions and all these fancy fans in there to make it sell better. But since it's not going up for sale and it's going back to the owner, I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. Um, I did this for free. I'll probably do a couple more for free if this video does well. And yeah, let's uh, turn it on one last time and make sure it posts and load windows. Okay, we're into the Windows loading screen, which is a good sign. Everything seems to be good. The original owner forgot to hook up some of the RGB, so I just hooked up the rest of it and gave him that cable up there in the corner. I think this looks pretty good. What do you guys think? So I'm gonna just run down this real quick just in case somebody is curious how to do this. I know um, most of you probably already know how to update your BIOS, but if you have something like an older board and you're trying to run a newer version of Windows, you can go to your support page or your, your motherboards page. And to find that, you can do a couple things. You can either look at the board itself or if you go into the BIOS, you'll be able to see the exact model. So I have the B365M Phantom Gaming 4, that's a mouthful. And so I'm gonna go down here and download the latest. There's a lot of these like warnings, like you can't go back to the other BIOSes and stuff. I'm not too worried about it. So let's uh, throw this on a flash drive. I love these older one gigabyte uh, flash drives. They work great for BIOSes of all ages. And so now we're just gonna pop this in and update it in here. All right, so to update your BIOS, you just want to go to your tool section. You're gonna to go to Instant Flash here, and it just read what is on this uh, flash drive that we just updated. And we're gonna grab that, say yes, and this is gonna take a little bit. Press Enter. All right, so I have the system installing Windows in the background. I'm not gonna go and run a bunch of game benchmarks and stuff on it. Most people already know that the 5700 XT is kind of like a PS5, very similar performance. The uh, i5 9600 KF, very good performance. Um, those two com combined together make an amazing 1080p gaming PC. Uh, so that's gonna do it for this video. If you liked the video, please like the video. Subscribe if you want, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.